family. It's your favorite queer radio personality, Anna Deshaun, with our queer news for today. Now, I want to make you a promise. We will continue to bring you the latest in queer news, culture, and politics every Monday by 7 a.m. Chicago time. So, if you're digging our intersectional take on the weekly, consider joining the Q Crew. The Q Crew is our monthly membership program we started to help grow this podcast. You get weekly emails from me, exclusive interviews with LGBTQ influencers from across the country, and beginning this year, special behind the scenes footage too. With your support, we can bring you more stories celebrating our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and comrade communities. Click the link in the show notes, okay? To join the Q Crew today. Now for the news. The news today is all about the National LGBTQ Task Force and the Creating Change Conference. The task force is celebrating its 50th anniversary while also celebrating the Creating Change Conference's 35th anniversary. They are honoring our past, present, and future. Let's talk about why we should even care and why it's a pretty special place. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. and y'all know we dropped our first Cube original, right? On February 7th, titled Black HIV in the South. How did we get here? Episode one is about the history. Episode two is about the fear. And episode three, which drops tomorrow, is about community. Take a listen inside the Cube or wherever you get your podcasts. Family. Black people in the South make up 38% of the population, but 52% of all new HIV infections. So why aren't we talking about it? I'm Anna Deshaun, your favorite queer radio personality. My co-host, Dwayne Kramer, and I will explore the shame, the stigma, and the solutions. This is Black HIV in the South. How did we get here? Tune in on The Cube or wherever you get your podcasts. You are now tuned in to higher frequencies. We do this frequently. Turn your radio station to E3 for that decency. Listen to great music and the latest movement. Safe listening for anyone that's tuned in. Who you waking up to? Anna Deshaun, Q Crew and Friends. It's that real talk. All live radio with the spins. You caught up in traffic, frustrated. Just check in with E3 to shift your vibrations and get elevated. That's queer radio done right. Choose to be yourself. That's the only way to live life. And that's how it's done here. Ain't no competition. We ain't worried about the other stations. Check. Family, I'm currently sitting in my hotel room at the Hilton recording this podcast from the 35th anniversary of the Creating Change Conference. It's a historical moment, not only because it's the 35th anniversary of Creating Change, but because it's also the 50th anniversary of the National LGBTQ Task Force. Now, Creating Change is the largest LGBTQ conference in the country. I actually heard someone say in the world. Irv Rashid Bad started this conference to teach and train LGBTQ activists and advocates. Irv made her earthly transition just last year in May and left an incredible legacy for so many of us to continue. I never had the honor of meeting her personally but I knew of the legend, okay, who stood up to power at every turn to fight for the humanity of LGBTQ folks. That's the work, for people to see our humanity. We can never let time allow us to forget that, never. Now let me set the stage for you, especially if you've never been to Creating Change or maybe never heard about it until I mentioned it on this podcast. When you walk into Creating Change, all you see is this beautiful tapestry that is the queer community. When we talk about community not being a monolith, it is the queer community. All the identities, all the ethnicities, all the differently abled, all the religions and everything in between y'all. We are here at Creating Change. What's really beautiful and why this space is to be celebrated is because no other space like it exists. 
It is a gathering of people from across the country, across the globe, who at some level care about the liberation of queer people. Let me give you a little taste of some of the sessions, okay? Fighting back while under attack, youth organizing and mobilizing in 2023. We've been here, by plus organizing then, now, and tomorrow. Caucus for Latinx survivors of spiritual and religion-based violence. Building a queer Asian community and movement, destigmatizing sex work. The gender to prison pipeline, the impact of mass incarceration of black trans women and girls. Building body inclusive practices. We're even doing a session this week. Big ups to Carter Cavazos, our director of community partnerships, titled Music to My Queers, BIPOC and QT Pac Talent Showcase. Family, if that's not enough, let me tell you, they also have Alcoholics Anonymous meetings for folks. There's also a game room and arcade for the people. And there's even a designated scent free and quiet space. This is creating change. The conference has over 3,000 attendees registered, 113 workshops, 44 caucuses, and 14 special events. Now, what's also very special about creating change is the reality that we don't all agree on how we get to this liberation. There are protests here and actions. There are impromptu call-ins when people are harmed. There are disruptions, loud disruptions, okay. All of this makes creating change a special place. Audre Lorde told us that our silence will not protect us. It won't save us. And this conference embodies that. We are a community where state by state, right wing white supremacists are taking our books out of schools, protesting at libraries. They are systematically introducing anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ legislation to intentionally break our community, intentionally break our backs, break the foundation that brings us joy. As the communication director for Creating Change and longtime advocate, Kathy Rena said, we are sick and tired of thoughts and prayers. We are. It's time for action, real action. And the people taking action are here at this conference, strategizing on how we work together and support each other in this fight. Kiera Johnson, the current executive director of the National LGBTQ Task Force and also the first black woman to hold that position, held her plenary and it was titled The State of the Movement. And <laughs> what took me aback was that she decided not to use her prepared speech at all. And this is what stuck with me most is that she said that the state of our movement is that we are not okay and we don't have to pretend to be. That hit, that hit my heart, my spirit, because I truly believe so many people look at the queer community and see the progress that's been made and think that everybody's all right. And I often think that people see us still at this, as this very white, gay-centered movement and full of people with lots of privilege. But they forget about us who live at the intersections, who are still battling racism, who are battling economic justice, who are battling immigration, who are undocumented. We are not okay but we still gonna win. I truly believe that. Hate will not win. During our time here at Creating Change, we've had the opportunity to share a booth with the task force and spread the word about the work we're doing with the Cube and the podcast we're creating and the platform we're building to curate the very best black, brown, and queer trans people of color podcasts in one spot. It's been magical. It's been work. <laughs> And we've had the opportunity to interview a few folks and we'll be doing more. And so you'll hear more about this even in next week's podcast. And what we've been asking them is, why do you come to Creating Change? Why is this a space that's important to you? And I wanna share some of their reasons why on this podcast. And then we'll close with a word from Irvashi that was shared during a tribute of her life. She gave this speech and everything she said still resonates today 
in such a real way. I hope that some of these interviews inspire you and touch you and I hope that these interviews give you some more context as to why creating change is special and I hope that Irv's words really touch you like they touched me. Till next week, family. Peace. My name is Amara Jones. My pronouns are she, hers, and this is my third Creating Change. I keep coming back because of the community. I mean, everybody is here. Like, it's pretty amazing in that way. Um, and it's so many parts of our community, uh, so many different, not only segments of our community, but with regards to race and uh, disability and gender identity and economic status and immigration status. And we just don't really have that equivalent. And so I think that that's why Creating Change has endured and why people keep coming back. Hi, my name is Quintoria Williams. I use she, her pronouns, and this is my first Creating Change. Hi, my name is Tony Watkins. I too use she, her pronouns, and this is also my first Creating Change conference. The charge to create change is important, not just in like today's time, but just period, moving forward. Um, I mean, we always hear we've come so far, but we have so far to go. And the only way we can do that is if we continue to create and affect change. Um, and I think gathering in this way, in a very intentional way, making sure that we learn from other people from different backgrounds, um, from different genders, from different sexualities, um, and really make sure that we're thinking about those people and the, those lived experiences when we're going back to our state and our region and doing our work. I think that's what carries the, the creating change from a conference to a lifestyle. In addition to the things that Quintoria said, I think that the safety, right, that's created in spaces that are made with such intentionality is really important. Um, even just like for learning, right? So to be able to learn, you kind of have to have your brain and your psyche in a certain space. So coming into places to learn about these things uh, while feeling really cared for and like people really thought about the identities that we all hold um, has been really awesome. Radical. Inspiring. My name is Jamie Kelton. I'm she, her. I have been to one, this one, this is my first to connect, to meet people, um, and to be inspired by queer community, because we're badass <laughs> and beautiful. Awareness, representation, all the folks here are doing such uplifting and inspiring work. I've met so many inspiring people, and it's important that we show up in the world, it's important that we tell our stories, just to let the rest of the world know that yes, we're just like you, but also, we're gonna change the world for the better. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mary Morton. My pronouns are she and hers. And I've been coming to Creating Change for probably somewhere between 15 to 17 years. And I came because it is the largest gathering of its kind uh, in the world. And there's no other place where people, I think, can really show up authentically as themselves and get space to do really important work and work that is needed now more than ever. It's really hard to describe what it's like when you've never been here. However, if you had not been to Creating Change, I would say if you want to come to a place where you're going to learn a lot about important issues that we should all be working on, if you want to come to a place where you're going to be able to do networking, if you want to come to a place where people are going to really encourage you and support you in your ideas and dreams, this is the place you want to be. It's creating change, and it's the 50th anniversary. So it's a really important time uh, for the movement, and it's an important time for uh, this conference. With hearts full of love and with an abiding faith in justice, we have come to Washington to speak to America. When all of us who believe in freedom and diversity see this gathering, we see beauty and power. When our enemies see this gathering, they see the millennium. Well, perhaps the religious right is about something. We call today for the end of the world as we know it.
We call for the end of racism and sexism and bigotry as we know it, for the end of violence and discrimination and homophobia as we know it, for the end of sexism as we know it. We stand for freedom as we have yet to know it, and we will not be denied. If you enjoyed what you hear, rate and review us inside your favorite podcasting app. This podcast is a production of E3 Radio, your number one queer radio station playing queer music and reporting on queer news in high rotation. <laughs>